Have you ever felt like a prisoner in your own body? We all have at some point. That is what the artwork untitled Your Body is a Body is a Battleground proposes. This 1989 artwork combines a photograph of a woman's face with a political slogan from the 1960s. The artist of this work is Barbara Kruger. She possessed a background in fine art and mass media. In the 1980s, she became known for overlaying pictures from magazines with popular slogans as in this artwork. She did this because she believed that they had the ability to determine who we are and who we aren't. She also claimed that the 80s were a time when issues of criticality came to the fore, and that is what this piece and many others of hers emphasize. Feminism, consumerism, desire, and sexuality. In this particular artwork, there is a close-up of a woman with her hair appearing to be pinned up in a bun. She looks straight at the viewer with a straight face, evoking an emotion of wanting to be taken seriously. There is an imaginary implied line that splits her face in half. On the left half of her face, her face is realistic in black and white. On the other half of her face, it appears as if her face has been x-rayed. It shows both a positive and negative image of her. At the top of her face in the center, there are the words, your body, in bold white letters bordered with a red background. In the middle of her face, there are the bold white letters, is a, bordered with the red background also. At the bottom of the woman's face is the bolded white word, battleground. The sides of the artwork are also bordered with red. There is an imaginary geometric line that creates symmetrical balance within this artwork. Black's primary colors besides the borders. On the right side of the woman's face, there is an emphasis of static white on her eyes, mouth, nose, and hair. On the left side, there is a cheese girl from light to dark, from the woman's face to her hair, and from her face to her skin. Overall, there is unity within this artwork. Through the lenses of social history, this artwork can be interpreted through looking at the milestones women have. For example, the suffrage movement in the early 20th century forced legislation to pass the 19th Amendment in the year 1920 to allow women to vote. In 2020, it will make about 100 years that all women have been voting. Again, in the earliest 20th century, in 1923, the National Women's Party proposed an equal rights amendment to the Constitution, and in the end, the Supreme Court ruled it unconstitutional for women not to be paid minimum wage when they were working the same jobs as men. In 1933, Frances Perkins was appointed Secretary of Labor, being the first woman to serve in the president's cabinet. Also, Crystal Bird Fawcett became the first African-American woman elected to the legislature in 1938. In 1963, the Equal Pay Act was signed. Furthermore, in 1964, the Civil Rights Act was signed and outlawed discrimination on the base of sex or race. This particularly pertained to discrimination and racial oppression African Americans faced during that time and still face today. This particular artwork was made for the protest of abortion rights. This artwork uses the word battleground to suggest that a woman's body is not their own and a person must fight for the rights to their own body. This was during the 1980s, however, it all began in the late 1800s. During this time, society advocated for voluntary motherhood. This is basically saying that a woman's body is used for the man and by the man. The woman is 
basically a piece of property. According to Anne Boylan, the law guaranteed husbands sexual access to their wives' bodies. In, the, in other words, marital rape was promoted. This issue led all the way up to the 1970s. Abortion was classified a felony in 49 states. However, in California, abortion was legal. In 1971, under certain conditions, 14 states said that abortion was legal. However, in 1976, the Hyde Amendment banned women from using contraceptives such as birth control. But in the year 1981, the Supreme Court ruled that minors could petition for abortion. Further, in 1983, the court ruled that doctors must give a woman a 24-hour rating period and the fetus should be disposed in a humanly manner. Unfortunately, in the year 1989, in the case Webster v. Reproductive Health Services, a law was passed in Washington State declaring that life begins at conception and bearing the use of public facilities for abortion is found unconstitutional. That is why Barbara Cooper's artwork was and still is relevant in this ongoing battle between society and a woman's personal choice to do with her body. Cooper's artwork emphasizes the fact that people will always try and control you even if they aren't you. This artwork can also be interpreted through the lens of race and gender. Black women have always been objectified and stereotyped for hundreds of years. In fact, according to Anne Boylan, in the documents she acquired, she found that women of color, especially black women, claimed that white feminists, feminists can be blind to the privilege that they hold. Black women have experienced racial, class, and sexual oppression from society. For example, when the 19th Amendment was passed, there were 25 potential new voters, but not all women could vote. Colored women and men were considered uneducated and were given unreasonable tests to even register. Native Americans were denied because they were not considered U.S. citizens, even though they were here before all of us. Poor white women couldn't register because their families couldn't afford it, so only a small percentage of women could vote. Black women and other people of color did not truly have equal rights until the Civil Rights Act, and even then it was hard. That is why Barbara Kruger's artwork is so powerful in the sense of liberation and awareness that women of color have been overly violated physically and psychologically. And that brings me into why this artwork applies to gender. Throughout history, the sex of a person has determined what the rest of their life looks like. For the women, it has been an oppressing, objectifying, and sexist life. True womanhood was divided into four moral parity purity, submissiveness, and domesticated. The woman was basically a religious virgin who did whatever she was told and took care of the family. The woman was supposed to be there for everyone else to serve. She was an object and property. Meanwhile, for the men, they were the providers, the warriors, the head of the household. They had to be cold and emotionless. They were the ones who got to be on the outside part of the world. The values that each gender is taught can take a psychological toll on a person. For example, the popular Disney movie Cinderella has unconsciously taught little girls to look for a prince who will save them. It has also taught little girls to be a happy little housemates that don't stick up for themselves. In a study done with this particular movie by Karen Miller, she got several little boys and several little girls and asked them what they thought of the movie. The little girls seem to have reinforced all of the prehistoric gender norms and stereotypes and e have even identified with Cinderella's condition. The study showed that interaction and sounds of approval from group members encouraged the acceptance of these stereotypes. That is why Barbara Kruger's artwork is important to the development of people and how they view themselves. As you can see, this artwork has a powerful message that can apply to all kinds of controversial topics. They bring to light the truth behind who we truly believe we are. It can help us question our predisposed viewpoints over what a true woman slash person is. Their bodies are, as Kruger's work states, a battleground. In my artwork, I followed some but not all of Barbara Kruger's methods and techniques. I used a close-up photo of a young African-American woman and used cutouts from magazines but did not use a political slogan. I created my own with cutouts of different letters from the magazines. And I also collaged different words together around the border. In the center of my artwork are the cutouts of the letters that form the words character over her eyes and has no over her nose and color over her mouth. I could have put these words in the position that did not block her face, but I did this to show that society and mass media have classically conditioned people to automatically assume who a person is by the color of their skin. They think they know how they talk, walk, and see the world, when in reality, they do not know anything. 
On the top of this artwork, I put words such as challenge, instance, and breakout. I felt these words were important in the sense of telling people to challenge what society has told them about a certain type of people because they could have an experience that changes their opinion in an instant. On the bottom of the artwork, I put together words that will, as it says, wake up. This is the 21st century, and by now we should know that there is always more than meets the eye. It is the experiences you have with the person that really tell you who they are. On the left side of my artwork, I put words like our, lives, we, and everybody. I felt like these words were important to us. It reminds the viewer that we all are somebody, and they wouldn't want to be judged on the color of their skin, so they shouldn't do it to somebody else. On the right side of my artwork, I collage words like learn, trend, protect, and banish. I think society is to make it a trend to empower others with their differences and banish the, the ignorance. I feel like both mine and Barbara Kruger's artwork send a powerful message to society.